The farming genre is one of my absolute favourites. Nothing quite beats the relaxing notion of farming crops, selling them for cash and using that money to upgrade and decorate your home. These are my current top 17 favourite farming games. Enjoy! First up is No Place Like Home where farming meets cleaning which mash up to make an incredibly addicting and satisfying gameplay experience. In this game you'll have a large open world made up of several different locations each with their own various environments where you'll essentially clean and transform as you go. The cleaning aspect, while it can get a little bit repetitive, is so utterly satisfying as you use your tool to break down the trash, suck it up and fight off a few robots at the same time. At the end of the day you'll be able to return to your homestead where you can plant crops, care for animals and decorate your farm. The aim of the game is to find your missing grandfather so you'll need to do favours for people and chase leads in order to figure out where he's gone. This is a perfect game for fans of the farming and cleaning simulator genres. I will be posting a full review for this in the coming weeks so keep your eyes peeled. Wildflowers is next being a sort of new-ish addition to the farming genre releasing back in late 2022. This game features a mixture of farming and fantasy as you play as a witch where you can use spells and potions to aid with your farm work and help the NPCs around town. This game has the cutest, most wholesome little town for you to explore filled with NPCs that have detailed and interesting backstories and personalities. The main story will have you hooked as you learn about your witchy heritage and begin unlocking magical powers to use in your farming life. As the majority of the townsfolk are unaware of the supernatural history of the town, you'll have to be careful, especially as it appears as though there is somebody focused on taking down your witch coven. Back to your farming, you'll get your own little farmstead where you can plant a variety of crops to sell or use in plenty of recipes, care for animals and even a secret little basement where you'll be able to use your witchy equipment. <laughs> Following this we have Big Farm Story, a game I actually just finished playing for the second time. Yet another story focused on finding your missing grandfather but this one will have you investigating, following clues, collecting resources and helping out your fellow neighbours in your quest for answers. Your grandfather's farm, which is now yours, can be upgraded and customised and you'll see it grow from a bare and near empty and run down place to a lively and profitable farm. Alongside this you'll be able to unlock new areas to explore where you can find new resources to cook and craft with and there are also various NPCs that will need your help with many many things. All of this makes for a game that has some awesome progression and as a result makes you feel really rewarded for what you do. Next up is Garden Pause which is a game that I initially was not a huge fan of but in my second playthrough I really settled down, did the grind, saved up and in the end found it to be a pretty great game. In Garden Pools, you'll live on an island with a handful of cute animal NPCs and you'll live just on the outskirts where you'll sell items through your shop. This game will have you exploring the land looking for resources, taming wild animals and doing various quests, with the end goal being to upgrade your home, your store and the town to its full potential. As you progress, you'll witness this tiny, near empty town grow into quite a large and busy little area with plenty of shops and NPCs around. This game does have its fair share of glitches and frame rate drops from what I experienced playing on my Nintendo Switch, so keep that in mind if you decide to get it. Following on from this, The Good Life, while not a full on farming game, does have a lot of farming elements with exploration, home upgrades and a town with NPCs, so I thought it fit pretty well with this list. You'll play as a journalist who is sent to investigate a town as it's known to be the happiest place on earth. You'll need to use your photography and investigation skills to find out what's going on as things only seem to get stranger and stranger. There's a wonderful cast of quirky and funny characters here and a huge open world to explore along with a cute rural town. 
You'll also get your own little house to upgrade, along with a small garden area to plant and grow crops and flowers. The story is definitely out there, and the characters too, but the game is funny, interesting and engaging. On to Behind the Horizon, which is an extremely underrated game. This is your classic pixel farming game, but the sheer love and effort from the developer really takes it to that next level. The story here is that you're basically transported to this strange world and you kind of just have to make do. You'll learn combat, farming, meet the locals in the nearby town and do them favours. The big highlight of this game for me is the environment, which is hands down the best nature simulator I've ever seen. The world around you actually changes and evolves over time with influences from the weather, seasons, man-made influence and even natural disasters such as floods, droughts and meteors. I need way more time to really go into what this game actually has to offer, but just a super 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 quick summary. There's cave systems to explore, lots of crafting, farm customization, farm animals, magic and other skills to learn and so on. I have done a review that goes way more in depth, so feel free to check that out. Moving on to the next one, which is a game I will forever keep putting on this list because I love it, and that's Epic Chef. While at first glance this game might seem more like a cooking simulator, I found it actually to be more like a farming simulator. You get your own mana that you can upgrade and expand, a huge piece of land to grow crops, have animals and craft goods, and you can go fishing as well and also find an assortment of items around the world. All of these will ultimately be used for cooking with and in cooking competitions, but farming just plays a massive role in this game. Not only is the farming aspect amazing, the story has this incredible humour to it with this kind of deadpan, dry humour that I love. You'll also come to really enjoy some of the characters as you work alongside each other to take down the corrupt cooking guild. This has to be one of my favourite farming games since it came out, and it will probably continue to be for a long time. Next up is Littlewood, which may look simple but looks can be deceiving as this game is absolutely jam-packed with content, with a town to build, homes to decorate, relationships to build, dating, farming, exploring different lands, and upgrading almost every single thing you could possibly imagine. You'll play as a celebrated hero that's defeated a dark wizard, although you have absolutely no memory of this. But that aside, you have now been tasked with rebuilding the town. You'll be responsible for building new homes and decorating them and terraforming the land. You can shape this town to be however you like by planting crops, housing animals, moving buildings and shops around, placing paths, fences and other decorations. As you progress in this game, you'll unlock the ability to travel to different lands, providing access to different shops and resources, and you'll also be able to open a museum where you'll have several collections to complete. While the game looks really basic and may give you the impression that there's not a lot to it, that is so far from the truth. On to Plantera 2, which to be fair, probably not everyone's cup of tea and doesn't really fit the typical idea of a farming game because it's one of those clicker sort of games. So I will keep this very short and sweet. This game is just so incredibly addicting and has a very satisfying leveling up system and I just found it genuinely hard to put this game down. Like, honest to god, no joke, I struggled. I even had issues when I was trying to review this previously, where I had to edit the video but go back to get more content and then ended up getting distracted and just playing the game for like, a few more hours. So it took me a really long time to get the review out. But you get the point, I definitely recommend this one, it's a really awesome, chill and addicting game to play. Next on my list is Harvestella, which is a game that while I wish there was a bit more farming related content here, what it did have I thought was pretty well done and I got seriously addicted to this one. In classic JRPG fashion, the story will begin with some memory loss and I won't go into too much detail about the rest of it because it's kind of a bit complicated, but basically you'll end up travelling to four different main areas to see what's corrupting the sea's lights which is that big crystal looking thing. While you do this, you're given a little home to stay in and here is where you can farm and look after animals. The farming here is awesome. 
I loved how you got a little book with these little goals to complete that rewarded you with new tools and items when you completed them. Especially when you get to a point where you don't really need any more money, it's an excellent motivator to keep you farming. The sound effects and mechanics for water and crops is super satisfying. And I realize that's just really specific, but I freaking loved it. Uh, I did think the lock-on system for using other tools was kind of super annoying though. Overall, love the farming, but I do wish you could maybe customize your house or edit your farm layout because that really would have taken it to that next epic farming game level. But putting that all aside, I think it's a great farming game and you should definitely play it if you don't mind a big heavy story to accompany it. Kinseed is yet another great farming game which has a bit of a twist. You'll play through the lineages of the family line that you create as you play. You start off as a child moving to a farm to live with your uncle and during this time you'll meet a kind of strange being that will offer you a sort of immortality. In exchange for four years of your life, your spirit will continue on through your family's generation where you will retain your skills and friendships as this being believes that you're capable of doing many great things. So of course you accept, why not? And you're immediately transported four years into the future to your 18th birthday to begin your dynasty. Pretty cool story. So you can earn money, open shops and start businesses, make friends, get married, have babies, and so on. And during all of this, your character will age, and at a point, you'll pass your spirit onto your next of kin to continue your journey on as them. There's a massive map to uncover as well, lots of different areas, people will go about their business and live their lives, have their own children, and so on. It's one of those games that gets you really excited at the start as you kind of realize all the cool things the game has to offer. So definitely recommend playing this one. On to Dinkum, which is basically if Animal Crossing was set in Australia. And as an Australian, I might be a little biased with this one, but I loved it. So the story here is that you just decide to take a chance and move away from the gloomy city you find yourself in and travel south to a new undiscovered land, which happens to be Australia. Here you'll begin building your very own settlement, where you'll convince people to move in and open up shops and grow your own little town. You'll be able to place buildings, terraform the land, decorate with fences, paths, plants and other structures, grow crops and take care of animals. Each playthrough has its own randomly generated map for you to explore, filled with native Australian wildlife like crocodiles, dingoes, emus and kangaroos, and you'll be able to collect a wide range of resources like ore and native Australian plants. To add to this, there's also a bunch of other things to do like mining, fishing, bug catching, completing the museum collection, cooking and hunting, and exploring the land in a wide variety of vehicles. Pretty cool. This next game is definitely my absolute favorite at the moment, as even though I finished this game several months ago, I still have it installed and keep going back to it, and that game is Ooblets. In this game, you'll travel to Badge Town in the hopes of starting over, where you'll run into the newly appointed town mayor. After admitting that you have no money and no plans, you'll be offered an old rundown farm just outside of town if you agree to help her with some tasks to get the town back to normal. So pretty sweet deal. These tasks will have you traveling to other towns, reopening several buildings, restoring the wildlands, investigating things, and several other odd jobs. The island where Badge Town is located is known for having these strange little creatures called ooblets that people keep as pets. Oddly enough, ooblets are known for their epic love of competing with each other in dance battles. You can also compete in dance battles with wild ooblets, and if you win, you'll get the seed for that particular ooblet so that you can grow one of your very own. Aside from the ooblets, you can also build relationships with the townsfolk, who are all quite unique and wacky, and you'll have a farm where you can grow crops and a home to customize. Moving right along to Rune Factory 5, another JRPG that begins with memory loss, believe it or not. 
Here you'll join a sort of keep the peace sort of group called Seed, where you'll help out people in need and eventually uncover some kind of sinister plot. Probably my favourite Rune Factory story to date, as they can oftentimes get a bit far-fetched. So gameplay wise you'll get your own space and a farm where you can grow crops and eventually you'll be able to get monsters too who can even look after your farm for you to an extent. You'll live in a small town where you'll have several shops some of which can upgrade your equipment and you'll have crafting, cooking and so on as well as a decently sized world outside of town to explore, fight and capture monsters. So really just your classic Rune Factory game but definitely my favourite so far. Next up is Grow Song of the Evertree. While not exactly farming, I thought it was very similar. The story here is that the world has been abandoned as this purple gloop has sort of taken over and corrupted everything. You're the only one that stayed behind and with a little help you'll set out to restore the world and hopefully bring everybody back. There's two main aspects to this game, the town building element and the world management. You'll need to grow and restore these little mini worlds, which you'll do by planting seeds, watering plants, removing junk and pulling weeds. As you do this day by day, you'll see the worlds transform from these barren and corrupted areas into these lush and alive worlds. As you restore these worlds, you'll start to bring people back to the land, where you'll need to use resources from your little worlds to build homes, places to work oh. and decorations. It's one of those really great relaxing games that are nice to play at the end of the day to unwind to. Staxel is yet another excellent addition to this list that I think every fan of the genre should try. It's a simple story where you move to a new town and start up a farm while also getting to know the people and do them some favours. Customization is a massive, massive part of this game. You can build up your farm any way you like, even editing your own home layout and building your own barns by placing building blocks of which you'll have a huge selection to choose from. Not only this, but you can build and customise everything in town. You'll be tasked with building residential houses for some newcomers and you can even edit pre-existing houses, decorate the town and really just do whatever you want. Crafting is also really really fun in Staxel as it's done in quite a unique way. You'll need to source building materials such as wood, nails, glue, etc and place them together on crafting stations to build items. Similarly, you'll need to add ingredients together to cook as well. It's really cool. Last, but certainly not least, is Graveyard Keeper, which is a slightly darker game with cannibalism, cults, and a lot of dead bodies, but it's a great game nonetheless. You begin your game having recently died, where you wake up in this mysterious world and are given the job as Graveyard Keeper. You'll find that the graveyard has been pretty poorly maintained, so you'll need to craft new headstones, add decorations, fix the fencing and eventually expand the space. Conducting autopsies is also part of your new job and you'll use this to your advantage as you learn to harvest organs to use in crafting and even cooking. As you progress in the game you'll unlock many new avenues and quest lines including expanding your home to allow farming, unlocking a whole bunch of different crafting stations and reopening the church where you'll start conducting sermons. Graveyard Keeper can be quite grindy and you'll need to do a lot of crafting for quests and to maintain the graveyard. There is also some DLC available that adds worker zombies, a town building aspect and tavern management which are all great fun and often go on sale for super cheap so they are excellent value for money. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you've been able to find a new game to play. Please, if you have any recommendations, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.